Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get going in 10 seconds as we see more participants dialing in. Okay. Good afternoon once again. Um, welcome to our Simon School Update with Dean uh, Seven Yaltakin. My name is uh, Sandeep Pati. Uh, nice to see a lot of names that I'm familiar with and some new names. Always good to meet Simon Alums across the board. Uh, I am a very proud Simon Alum from the class of 2010, full-time MBA class. Um, I'm based out of uh, New York City and, and I'm connecting with you all virtually today. Uh, before we even begin, I just want to highlight, it is amazing to see that just for today's sessions, we have folks who are based out of at least 23 states in the US and are from eight countries. That is literally the first illustration of you know, the richness of diversity that Simon represents as, and has long championed. So very glad to see all of you participating in the update today and very grateful for your time that you'll spend with us in this session. Uh, also as a proud member of the Simon Alumni Board, I'm very, very pleased to be hosting this session today with the Dean. Uh, we are here and we'll get to hear from the Dean about an overview of all the exciting new initiatives that Simon is uh, launching and progressing on, an update on our strategic plan, Simon 2025, and very importantly, where the Simon alumni community can expect to participate and, and assist in the year ahead. There is a Q&A box up top on your Zoom screen where throughout the presentation, you can uh, ask your questions if you haven't done ahead of uh, this session. And we will, uh, at the end of Dean's presentation, try to address as many of them. So with that, uh, I would like to pass it on to our very distinguished uh, Dean Yeltsin. Dean, get us started. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sandeep, and welcome everyone. Welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, given the different locations and time zones that everybody is um, logging in from. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. So I'm going to give some updates about what is happening at our school. So if you recall, um, we're going, we have a Simon 2025 uh, strategic plan. Um, this is one our, our one pager for Simon 2025 that we have shared with you, but I just wanted to give you a quick uh, reminder of our focus areas. We've been putting a lot of focus on our uh, expanding and, and certainly investing in our in intellectual and professional hub, um, our agile growth and partnerships, um, innovation and entrepreneurial mindset and opportunity and access. I'm going to delve deeper into some of these areas and give you some uh, different uh, examples. But I just wanted to say that we are certainly um, are hiring a new faculty. We have been making a lot of different connections and bringing a lot of professionals into the school, whether they're working as uh, um, our adjunct faculty, whether they're coming in and doing insights from the top or whether they are speakers in our classrooms, certainly bringing the theory of business education and, and the practice of business uh, together more often. We have been uh, certainly um, have launched some new uh, partnerships. Uh, some of it has to do with our accounting program. We're trying to bring in a larger group of students into our accounting program with a partnership that we've established in India. Uh, we've established a partnership now uh, recently with our School of Medicine and URMC to give them some health management leadership um, training as well. We'll be launching that certificate very soon. And on the innovation and entrepreneurial mindset, um, those of you who um, may have missed the news, but the AIN Center for Entrepreneurship, which is a university center for entrepreneurship, which is physically located within Simon, has come under Simon uh, uh, infrastructure. And we have a wonderful new project going on to define the, the scope and, and, the, and the basically the version two of that center. So you'll be hearing more from us probably later in March or early April about what our plans are for that center and what we'll be doing both on the educational and also on the venture front. And opportunity access, absolutely very still much, uh, very much uh, dear and near to our hearts. And we're continuing with both our efforts to bring in a diverse group of students, 
faculty and staff and be able to provide them with both professional learning and, and other opportunities as well. So let's dive in a little bit deeper into some of the areas where we've made quite a bit of progress and some new exciting initiatives. In the next slide, let me talk a little bit about generative AI at Simon. So hopefully you've heard a little bit about our generative AI initiative. Um, when OpenAI first launched uh, generative AI, um, we were one of the few schools to really take this um, you know, opportunity and run with it. So it was launched in sort of, I think it became public in November of 2023. By early summer, we had a generative AI uh, initiative in at Simon because we recognized together with our faculty and our staff that a this tool was already being used and being embraced widely by our students by our faculty but that at the same time that this was a transformative tool and and more and more of such tools would come uh, in the near future to both change the education landscape but also change the business landscape as well. So what do we mean by this initiative? We're really engaging with it as a critical tool for our current students, but also for, for our own operations. We started out with first instituting a flexible policy for our faculty to use, because the first thing that came to mind was about quite honestly, academic integrity, because while these tools are very, very useful, um, as we know, they can lead to a lot of kind of misuse or, um, you know, they, they do generate and they do take data from uh, other sources. So we wanted to make sure that we were using this tool responsibly. And that started out with a flexible policy design, but we also wanted to make sure that this is, was being used and we could train our students and train the rest of our faculty and use it as a very important productivity tool. So we also instituted some innovation grants to create incentives for our faculty to incorporate it into the curriculum. And this has been embraced really widely by our faculty. So we've integrated it into courses, starting with pre-fall, which happens before the beginning of the fall semester. And we've been pushing along and we've been focusing on the use of the and the academic integrity. We've provided a series of training for our students, faculty, as well as our staff. And we have provided also some training for our alumni as well. We've done two sessions with our alumni. We will be doing another series of uh, sessions with our alumni. So certainly log in, they are workshops, they are uh, interactive. So you actually get to learn immediately in those workshops and take away those tools with you or, or your knowledge of those tools and apply them in your settings as well. What I want to say is that what our generative AI initiative isn't, we're not trying to become the leaders in designing or pushing uh, kind of AI tools itself. We want our students to be well equipped to use these tools, both responsibly and effectively, not only in their coursework, but also in, um, in their internships and in their job opportunities after graduation. Because these tools are going to be mainstream. They're already mainstream. Uh, some companies and some industries are slower or faster to adapt them. But we do think that this is an important part of the skill set for our students. We didn't stop there. We had on, had an online um, master's in business analytics. Um, we took that online and master's in business analytics and we redesigned it and relaunched it just about a week ago or so as master's in business analytics and applied AI. We continued the integration into our curriculum and we've also started to design some uh, generative AI trainings for our corporate partners. And our hope is to connect with more of you and to connect with our corporate partners and really be a leader amongst our peer institutions in um, incorporating AI in many facets of our education, research and alumni and corporate engagement. So more to come, definitely look out for those emails. Talking about corporate engagement, um, we had just created an Office of Corporate Engagement about four months ago. And the main goals of, uh, of creating a standalone office is to really A, 
to coordinate the activities across many of the corporate engagement initiatives we have in the Ainsley OSE, in the Bennett Career Management Center, in our alumni relations and advancement offices, and to really provide a both guidelines, but a, also a direct point of contact and really a strategic plan around our corporate engagement. So in the next slide, you'll see the goals of this corporate engagement initiative. We wanted to basically establish our corporate engagement messaging tools and, and awareness as well. And we wanted to expand our corporate in engagement in many, many ways, um, both in terms of revenue generation and engagement levels. And we wanted to build foundational corporate engagement capabilities at Simon. So what are we really trying to do is we're trying to get more organizations to engage with Simon in more ways, more frequently. That's really the essence of this corporate engagement initiative. It was launched in last August. If we have this multi-phased approach, as you can see, I'm not going to read all of the details, but a lot of the aspects of these uh, different phases have been completed and some of which are still in process. So the three primary areas is establishing the value proposition, uh, building on the messages, a messaging that comes from the value proposition, and then the longer term, which is the initiative is going to really build out the core corporate engagement capabilities and coordinated across many uh, functions. We've already talked to 100 firms. Uh, we've secured sponsor sponsorships for case competitions. We're have doing a launching a beta offer, which was our AI workshop, and really coordinating across these different offices at Simon so that we ha can have um, you know, a much richer set of engagement opportunities and a much richer set of touch points. So in the next slide, I'm going to tell you about sort of some of the academic year-to-date highlights. Um, what we've been do, doing recently, as I've said, we've talked to many, many companies. Just recently, we've had multiple visits, uh, Texas, Austin, Dallas, met you know, nine big firms over there that you could recognize the names of. Um, we had a MBA presentation to our peers in our uh, Washington DC, over 80 attendees to talk to them about our both, um, you know, value um, of the corporate engagement that it has brought and what are our plans of engagement. We developed the core B2B value proposition messaging strategy. And we have the corporate engagement strategy group launched internally in Simon. And now we have a Rochester networking group launched as well. We've, as I've said, have uh, done two workshops with uh, Professor Dan Keating. And we also have an AI focus groups conducted uh, for faculty, general you know, business, marketing, and analytics. And we have produced a collateral piece for promotions that we would like to also share with you so that you can continue to be our ambassadors in that communication as well. So a ton of activity. How can you help? Please spread the word. Um, we do have this really nice one page flyer. Um, share corporate engagement messaging within your organizations as you see appropriate and fit. Our executive director of corporate, corporate engagement is Andy Tempest. Uh, he moved from his role in the Bennett Career Management Center to be, become the executive director of this program and of this office. Certainly connect with him. He is always available, whether on mobile or through email, to discuss corporate engagement opportunities at Simon. So keep those connections going. We would love to hear from you. We would love to be able to engage with you personally or through your companies so that we can add value, whether that's skill building for your companies, being able to bring folks into our programs, uh, some sponsorship events, and certainly recruiting um, with our students as well. Okay. Talking about corporate engagement and, and student recruitment activities, let me also give you a brief rundown of our employment outcomes. We have, as you know, we tend to um, report on our employment outcomes three months after our MBA students graduate and six months after our master students graduate. That's the kind of the industry standard and that's how we do the reporting. 
So we certainly had a successful year in our 2023 graduates and in our employment outcomes. Um, I don't have to remind a very uh, productive group of alumni that that had been a bit of a bumpy year in terms of, you know, a, employment in the United States in general. A lot of um, sort of, um, you know, turmoil um, in, in especially tech companies and some of the consulting companies. So three months after graduation, um, 91% of our students were placed and placed really, really well. The total compensation, our goal uh, in our strategic plan was to grow that compensation to about $168,000 by uh, for our 2023 graduates. We actually exceeded that by almost $10,000 with a total compensation coming just a smidge below $180,000. Um, so we hear from a lot of peer schools that they have had a also, you know, when we saw in 2022 and 2021, a larger group of graduates finding uh, employment at this three month mark in the mid 90s, upper 90s, um, but uh, it's a little bit below than that. Uh, but given some of the kind of the headwinds that were uh, being experienced by a lot of business schools, we have a very uh, impressive outcome, uh, especially on the compensation front for our MBA students. For our MS students, which we will tell you about on the next slide. Uh, sorry, before I get there, here is a sampling of our MBA hiring. Employ uh, hiring. These are the employers. Um, again, this is a sampling. It's not a comprehensive list, but you can recognize all the names on there. We're continuing to place our students in great uh, companies and great roles. And the students are really making strategic decisions about where they want to go um, in their careers and um, what are the positions that will get them to those uh, particular goals that they are seeking professionally. So great outcomes all around. And here's our MS outcomes. Um, the MS employment outcomes are a little bit different. So first of all, let me just uh, explain. Some of our MS students tend to go back to their, um, you know, there's a larger international group of students in here. They tend to go back to their um, uh, country of origin. So we, this data is tracking the employed in the United States. So the numbers, especially for our, uh, for the, for the salaries listed here is for um, US employment. We have our MS accountancy, 69,000, MS business analytics, over 80,000, and then MS finance and MS marketing in the 70,000 range. And again, this exceeded overall goal that we had set in Simon 2025 as our mean base salary for our graduates. 81% is the number. Uh, we would like that number certainly to go up. And again, uh, both because of you know, challenges regarding visas, but also challenges regarding some of the, especially in the tech industry uh, that we have seen. Um, this is a little lower than we would like it to be. So we're certainly seeing a lot of good activity this year and hoping to exceed that 81% level in the year coming. Uh, and we have seen some increases, especially in the base salary in our MS accountancy program, which tended to trail behind our other MS programs. So we've seen a significant increase there. Finance has had a bit of an up and down year, both in terms of compensation and in terms of uh, job offers. But we're hoping to see an uptick in that coming into a strong kind of year uh, 2024. So here is different companies, again, a sampling of, of hiring for our MS students, and you'll recognize all of the names here as well. Again, same as our MBA students, uh, this group of students are also very much looking for um, you know, positions, not just in great companies, but positions and, and um, you know, that really set them on a strategic and, and a great professional path for advancement. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about alumni engagement since this is definitely an event uh, that has been sponsored by our um, Simon alumni uh, board. Uh, I want to tell you about our amazing community. So in the next uh, slide, you'll see our regional networks. Um, 
First of all, I'd like to really thank all of our alumni volunteers on this call that have helped build these wonderful regional networks across the country and around the world. Um, if you see your city on this list, and even if you don't, and you'd like to learn more about the activities we're doing in these different places or, or become a regional network leader, please contact us. Um, we'll, at the end of this presentation, there's also a QR code that you can scan, and that's a great way for you to continue to connect with our advancement office, a very convenient way. Uh, we're making our you know, rounds around these many different regional areas, both alone for Simon Signature events, but also as a part of the university's new strategic uh, plan, Boundless Opportunity. So here's some upcoming Simon events as the new year kicks off, some really great opportunities for you to engage with our school, but also with students, because we do have a lot of uh, both current and prospective students coming to these events. Um, starting tonight, we kick off with our annual Opening Doors program, where our alumni can give advice and share contacts with our MBA students, seeking, uh, you know, seeking jobs in fields of marketing, finance, and consulting. Um, you know, we broke our regions this year by time zone, which made it a little bit easier. And several spots are still available. If you're interested in participating, it's never too late to register. So please keep these dates. Um, on February 28th, uh, our next visit is going to be in Florida. We're going to be in South Florida for a day and a half. And then la later this year, we're, I'll continue to be um, you know, visiting as many of our um, you know, top markets in terms of the size of our regional network in the coming months, DC, New York City, Boston, San Francisco, and Bay Area. And on May 1st, this is the day of giving virtual event. This is our most philanthropic 24 hours, very condensed, where alumni, students, faculty, and staff rally to show their support for the different areas of the university that is most meaningful to them, whether that's uh, scholarships, whether that's immersions, whether that's uh, club activities. We do hope that you will consider supporting the Simon Business School again this year. And, and again, thank you in advance for all of the uh, generosity that you've shown in the past and, and on this uh, annual day of giving as well. Every gift makes an impact. So please stay connected. This is the one plea we have for you. Uh, we are on Instagram, we're on a bunch of different, you know, different social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, and here's that QR code again. Um, I hope you're also subscribed to the Dean's Corner blog where you get to hear a lot about um, both the research and the different opinion pieces coming out of our faculty and our alumni. If you ever want to be featured in the Dean's Corner blog on a topic that is of interest to you, that is also would have interest for our wider alumni, staff, faculty, and student network, we're happy to hear from you as well. So stay connected and thank you. Dean, thank you so much for those remarks and taking us through some of the new and exciting initiatives. Seems like 2024 will be a really good year to look forward to. Um, we, just for the group here, there is a Q&A box up top. If you wish to ask a question to the Dean, please uh, put in your questions in there. We did receive some questions beforehand. So Dean, maybe I get started with those questions. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is, as we forge ahead on Simon 2025, what do you see as the greatest opportunity for Simon? First of all, I when you said 2025, I realized we're already in 2024. It's not very far away from now. Now the pressure is yeah. on for certainly. Well, I mean, th there's a whole variety of activities going on, so I'm not going to enumerate all of them, but I do think that what's really has always made Simon distinctive uh, and will continue to make Simon distinctive is our ability to launch new initiatives, new program were very nimble. Um, you know, it didn't take very long for us to launch a generative AI. We want to continue to be leaders in innovative education, research-based innovative education. So we're really excited to, to see how our new MSBA and applied uh, uh, AI program takes us, how are the generative AI initiative takes us um, so that that can be another uh, great 
kind of distinguishing factor for Simon as STEM was and as our commitment to diversity has been. Thank you, Dean. Uh, the next question, which you briefly touched upon during your presentation as well, what are some of the greatest challenges that Simon students are currently facing? Mm -hmm. And how is the school preparing them to be the best version of themselves as future business leaders and innovators in the industry, given so many changes are happening pretty rapidly? Yes, I mean, you said it, you know, change, change is the right word. Uncertainty is the is the right word. Um, you know, there's still some in terms of just sort of thinking about job employments, uh, jo job outcomes. Um, you know, are students certainly interested in tech industry widely uh, defined and, and certainly interested in consulting? And um, so, you know, we're still waiting for that correction, if you will, um, after the pandemic to to settle down. So there are some still some challenges in the, in the labor market to to continue to. And one of the things that we always tell our students is that the incredibly rigorous education that they get at Simon and that's foundational education. It doesn't matter what you know phase or cycle of the economy we're in. That education is a quantitative economics-based education that is geared towards problem solving and a keen interest and an ability to learn is going to serve them very well, no matter what headwinds are happening this year or five or 10 years into their, into their career as well. I think there's going to be a you know, continued emphasis on technological breakthroughs as we're seeing with the generative AI. I think it's important for our students to understand how to combine that foundational knowledge that they get here, along with these very interesting, uh, transformative and productive tools. And I think they're uniquely positioned to be able to do that because the tools themselves on their own are not going to be enough. We've already talked a lot about the kind of the caveats, the biases, uh, the hallucinations and so on. It's knowing how to query, knowing how to use the tools effectively, being able to verify because you have that foundational knowledge. That's, I think, is the magic combination. And our students will continue to navigate any of these fluctuations, whether it's the geopolitics, whether it's certain industry fluctuations very well, if they continue to forge ahead with those double you know, swords that they have in their arsenal. And as you've heard from me before, you know, this response always resonates with me mm -hmm. as someone who joined Simon in fall of 2008, looking for job in 2009 on the great financial crisis. You know, the flavor of maybe the, the economy changes, but the foundational knowledge, as you said, prepares you for the longer, longer run. Yeah. So and networking. I mean, this is what we do, right? It's, it's very because networking is for the long run. It's not just for the short run. Our students should continue to engage with their peers, with their alumni so that they are a you know getting mentored because many of us and many of you have had various fluctuations in your career whether it was you know particular company specific or things like the great recession and it's very important for them to continue to be engaged with the network because that's where a lot of wisdom that's where a lot of experience and that's where a lot of opportunities are thank you uh, one other question that came through the, the Q&A box is, what are some of the ongoing DEI plans? And are there any updates on some of the DEI metrics? Yes, absolutely. So our DEI, um, as as you know, we we do um, you know do an update on our action plan on our equity, diversity, and inclusion action plan once a year. About around this time, we're about to actually um, you know do that update very soon. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. I'll certainly be in touch about that. Uh, we're continuing to forge ahead. We've brought in a very diverse group of students. So in terms of our sort of student diversity, whether that's geographic and international diversity, whether that's uh, underrepresented minorities um, in uh, from our uh, US-based uh, students, those metrics are still strong. There are areas that we need to pay better um, or, or even more focused attention to. That's on the recruiting side of, of faculty, I would say, and some of the recruiting side of our staff. 
Um, you know, we're continuing to revise how we approach those areas. Um, we've had some success, but there's definitely more work to be done. Um, and DEI continues to be very much a, um, a value and a commitment by our institution. I'm sure that all of you are reading a lot of the newspapers and there's been a lot of talk around kind of both corporate and higher education DEI practices and some of the pushback and so on. Simon has had it in its DNA since the 1960s, that commitment to a you know diversity, equity and inclusion uh, is not going away. We're fully committed to it and wait for our update. It's coming up very soon. Thank you, Dean. Could you also maybe talk a little bit about the MSBA programs in context of some of the, you know, new tools, technologies that you described? And, and a related question that came through was, are there any plans to add DBAs? Yes. So, uh, so let me start with the DBA part because that's a that's a quick answer. I'll answer this in reverse. We are um, in the phase of planning our DBA. Um, you know, it's uh, in just to give you a sense of sort of how any program launch goes, whether it's you know at a doctorate level or at a MS level. Um, we tend to start out with our faculty um, to see if this is something that we have the capabilities and the interest to be able to because. We, you know, you can't just kind of design, we need the faculty to be able to help us design these programs, teach in these programs. So those conversations have taken place and, and, and they have been extremely fruitful and positive. The, the faculty are on board with this. We have a template design. Um, DBA has not been offered in New York State just yet. So part of this is going to be about how to approach New York State to be able to get an approval for a doctorate uh, program. Um, and we're, we're doing a lot of, we've done some benchmarking, we've certainly talked to some alumni. So hopefully you can see a DBA offering uh, maybe in the fall of 2025, but I don't wanna get too much ahead of myself. Uh, it takes a little while to, to, to go through both the internal and the state reviews, but yes, it's one of our uh, initiatives that we're pushing along. And on the business analytics side, and again, you know, business analytics, we, we want to combine a lot of these foundational knowledge that we give our students. You know, how do you apply quantitative tools? How do you actually gain insights from data? How do you use that to then add value, whether you're making strategic decisions or investment decisions or, uh, you know, capital um, decisions? How do you actually use the data um, you know, analytics tools to add value to the organizations that you'll be. That's always going to be core, right? On the tool side, we need to adjust and we need to be nimble. Now, we don't want to, you know, um, you probably wouldn't be surprised at all to know that there's every week, you know, goes by that somebody's trying to sell us some tools to be able to use in our curriculum. And we're very, very careful about what we do integrate and do not integrate into our curriculum. Our faculty vet them, and we certainly uh, are very careful. But some tools are, and, and some, um, you know, technological breakthroughs are transformative, like the generative AI. Again, our goal is always do not be very tool specific. We're not trying to teach you one particular tool, one particular software. That's not our uh, aim with any of our initiatives. Our aim is always, okay, take that very much, that problem solving, quantitative querying, cost benefit analysis type of approach that is bread and butter of the Simon education and evaluate it. Where does this tool make sense? What are some of the caveats? Where, where is it actually a productivity enhancer? And, and learn to use it responsibly and marry it with your foundational knowledge. So we'll continue to do that. We're incorporating a lot more of these AI tools into our curriculum. It's gonna be more exciting with maybe some of the tools like Copilot coming into the, um, into the mix as well. So we're staying abreast of all of those developments. Thank you, Dean. Um, one other kind of topical um, issue that has come up both in corporate side and educational side. One, and this might be both Simon and university wide. So I admit, you know, this question may have two parts to it. One is how is university in the school thinking about climate risk and incorporating sustainability into the way we operate? Mm -hmm. And then back to Simon as as we think about our curriculum 
and kind of the school projects works we do is sustainability climate risk being incorporated into into the thinking as well yes i mean you know we've been offering a class in in esg in one of our finance classes that's actually also uh, co-taught with a practitioner uh, as well as our uh, head of our finance program uh, Dan Burnside, Professor Burnside. Um, so we have a standalone class, but we're also in trying to incorporate it into, um, you know, where it makes sense into our curriculum as well. Um, we don't have a standalone sustainability initiative as maybe some uh, uh, other schools do. But at the end of the day, it's sort of, you know, it's in the accounting classes when we're talking about or measuring externalities. Um, it's in our finance classes because these are substantial climate change is a substantial risk and it's part of risk management. Our students are certainly um, being both encouraged and are interested in going to uh, whether it's case competitions or emergence that do have a, um, an, uh, you know, a component that speaks to sustainability. Um, and I'd be, you know, really willing to talk to any of you who are squarely in this field and who are, um, you know, working in this area within your company or outside of your company. What are the initiatives that you're doing and what are some of the skills or, or um, that we can impart on our students and integrate into our curriculum? That's an area that we should probably invest a bit more, um, you know, in full disclosure. Um, we've made some headway over the last couple of years, but um, there's definitely room for growth. Thank you, Dean. Uh, one related question to what you just answered a couple of questions back. So there is clearly a messaging that, you know, the MB education as provided by Simon is foundational, it's core concepts, not tool specific, which can, you know, kind of modify itself. Having said that somebody who's looking for education from outside in and looks at these self-serviced tools, which are available, short duration in nature, potentially less expensive too. What has been Simon's strategy to kind of maybe narrow that information gap for the students who out there are looking for, you know, um, the various skill sets they need to develop? And what has that impacted the overall strategy in the way we think about in incoming students and preparing them once they're in? I mean, absolutely. I, I always think that these things are not mutually exclusive, um, you know, and uh, I learn from small bits, pieces of whether it's a YouTube or a Coursera course. Um, and I encourage everybody to learn from them as well. I, I, I do think that the proliferation, you know, there's some quality vetting that one has to do. But, but I think being able to look, we're in the business of education. I would love to be able to make that education and we would love to be able to make that education accessible to a larger audience as much as possible. Having a degree-based programs, um, you know, we understand that they can be very time-consuming and they can all, they are also expensive. Um, but there are folks out there who also want to sort of say, hey, I, all I need for my purposes is to learn a little bit of, let's say, managerial accounting, a little bit more, you know, forensic accounting, a little bit more digital marketing. And for those, when people self-identify certain gaps that would be really value added for their organization and for their skill set, I think these kinds of, uh, you know, short courses, micro-credentialing, certificate programs, are extremely useful. So I wouldn't, I would never discourage anybody from learning, period. So that that's that's on the table. Having said that, I do think that it's very, if one doesn't have a foundation, a really deep foundation in multiple areas, I think it's really hard to take those courses as standalone courses and, and turn them into value added. You need to understand, you can't just crunch data. You need to, you can't just take a data science class and be able to add value because at the end of the day, you need to be able to ask the right questions. You need to understand what the data is telling you. You need to then connect all of those dots. To be able to do that, you do need a deeper foundation. Once you have that deeper foundation, upskilling as you go along, relearning, learning new tools, learning new areas, they can be done. That's why we've started to offer a variety and we've started to develop actually uh, a variety of certificate programs as well. We're, as I mentioned at the beginning of my uh, presentation, we're developing one that's in the healthcare leadership for, um, 
for our uh, community over here in URMC and SMD, because again, these are folks who, you know, they're surgeons, they're, they're health, uh, uh, you know, administrators, um, they're not looking to necessarily get an MBA or an MS degree, but now they are in positions where they're in management positions and they'd like to be able to have some of those managerial skills. We're trying to do these in, in, in certain are, other areas as well. There'll probably be a triple M certificate. So we're offering them as well. We'll continue to enlarge that set. Uh, but, you know, um, as, as an overlay, they're great opportunities, but they're never going to replace the foundational deep knowledge. Thank you very much. Um, maybe we have room for one question, if maybe two. Uh, my favorite one, as an alumni of Simon, and for everybody who's on the call, how can we best support and engage with the school on the various initiatives you laid out? What would you? What would be a recommendation for that? Well, first of all, start with that QR code that we just splashed, and we'll put it back up again. Continue to anything that you know, following us on various social media, um, answering uh, the calls to participate in surveys, whether that's surveys that comes from the ranking institutions, whether that's surveys that comes from the schools, because we do want to hear from you. You are our experts. You are our success stories. Um, you know, connecting to the regional networks, coming to some of the events that we have um, in your backyard, hopefully, if not somewhere where you might be traveling to coming and visiting us as uh, you know on whether it's Meliora weekend connecting with our Bennett Career Management Center to be able to mentor students offer internships so everything from sort of five minutes of your time whether that's clicking on our social media to follow us uh, to going to an evening with your peers and with your uh, fellow alumni in your region, to mentoring a student, to letting us know about internship or, or full-time opportunities in your company, being our brand ambassadors, talking about, Simon, the great education that you've had um, and, and how you would like to open you know, opportunities for other Simon students in your companies. Um, and of course, you know, any kind of philanthropic um, investment that you can make in the school, however big and small, those are a multitude of ways that you can engage with us. And we have our new corporate engagement flyer as well that you can, um, you know, help spread the word. We're not a very large community. For that community to continue to grow, we need to tap into your networks. So please be a node, a, a node of passage in your networks. So continue to pass our brand, our accomplishments, our students, uh, great you know, recruitment opportunities to your networks. Thank you so much. And again, somebody who has uh, benefited both with my time in Rochester and somebody who has gone, you know, it's also a great way to stay in connection with your school, with your friends, with your peers, and just uh, giving back to the community, you know, so uh, encourage everyone, as Dean said, to, you know, uh, do, do your best in terms of staying connected with the school and contribute in whichever way uh, you can. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we are up the hour and uh, we have hopefully addressed, yes, we have hopefully addressed all the questions that came live to Dean as well. So great job. Thank you again uh, for both your time, your remarks, taking us through all the exciting initiatives that are coming up, taking the group through the whole strategic initiatives with all the programs that are up and coming, really excited about what the future holds. And as you said, it's a foundational knowledge that we provide and, and it's, it's uh, something that uh, we can all look forward to be part of and contribute. So for all my alumni friends out there, thank you for joining us today. And please reach out if you have any questions, you know, there are links to the QR code and help us in any way you can and stay connected with the community. Many, many thanks again for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>